people who have died then been resuscitated. What do you remember seeing? When I was eight, I learned how to fix small engines. That being said, my dad had an old flathead Briggs & Stratton 5.5 horsepower engine that didn't work. He also had a riding lawnmower that had no engine, nor blades. He gave me the task of getting the engine running. I could put it on the riding lawnmower and have fun whenever. I was so anxious at school the next day. Well, that day I tore apart the motor and had it running by bedtime. The next day we had the thing mounted and riding around. Flash forward a few weeks, me and my older sister were out riding when my shoelace got caught on the back spindle. It pulled me off and was dragging me. Mind you, only going as fast as it would go. My sister dropped and went in reverse, which caused her to go right onto me. The chain and chain wheel caught my lower right back, ripping my skin open and pulling my large and small intestine out, severing my right lung, breaking my spine in two places, and shredding my right kidney. I felt the thing roll onto me, then everything went blank. Couldn't see, move, speak, or anything. No pain as well. All I remember was the blackness. After my father got my heart beating again, I remember laying there in pain. Also remember feeling my back and short of breath. I felt what I still believe is my stomach in my hand while I was feeling my back. Once I was in the ambulance, everything went blank except this time I saw myself laying there and the medic shocking me. I felt a hard pull and I was back in myself. A few minutes later, I was on a table with strangers in white all around me. I remember them in a panic, then standing next to my grandmother, who passed when I was three. She told me she was my Nana. We were there watching them jolt my heart with tiny round paddles. She kept telling me it was okay. They called my death time at 6.06 p.m. Then, all of a sudden, I wake up and I'm all fixed and stapled up. My parents told me I had died three times. The first for five minutes. The second was a little more than 12 minutes. But the last time was astonishing to the doctors. My heart stopped beating for 20 minutes. My parents made them continue jolting my heart. They told me the doctor kept telling them that I was going to have a 98% chance of being brain dead. I'm 25 years old and am as healthy as ever. I'm fully capable of walking as well. I attempted suicide a few years ago by hanging myself with an extension cord. I had no pulse when the police arrived, but nobody's really sure how long I was up there. I was resuscitated in the ambulance but was in a coma for a little under two weeks. Anyway, all I remember is a feeling similar to general anesthesia once I jumped off the table, but for the five seconds before it went black, I was in total panic and had a total change of heart from the confidence in my decision to end it seconds before. And then it was just nothing, like a deep sleep. And when I finally awoke from the coma, it was like finally reaching the surface of a pool after diving too deep. I was in the same panic that I was immediately after I jumped from my table, like I just blinked instead of being knocked out for two weeks. So to answer your question, I don't remember anything at all. It was like being in a deep, dreamless sleep. Perhaps if I regained consciousness immediately after being resuscitated, I'd remember something more interesting, but yeah, nothing is about all I can offer. My sister was shot while she was walking her dogs in our small town in Alaska. The bullet ricocheted around, piercing her bowel in nine places. Even though we had one of the best road Scholar docks in the north at our ER, and the only flight out of town was miraculously minutes away from takeoff and held up to fly her to Anchorage, she bled out and died on the operating room table. She knows because she vividly remembers everything the surgeon said as she lay dead on the table. What she told me later is remarkable. She recalls drifting up and into a very bright light. She was no longer in pain and felt compelled to travel into the brilliance. It led to an amazing river. Seriously, the look on her face when she describes this place helps me realize that radiant, endless joy is not just a possibility, but an eventuality. She describes playing in a river that consisted of pure knowledge. Anything she ever wanted to know was at her fingertips. As she played in this amazing river, she could sense figures on the distant shore. They were our people, she explained. Our family. Our animals. All waiting patiently for her to finish playing in the river and wade towards them on the shore. Though she was not ready to leave the marvelous river, 
She knew without being told that they would wait patiently and joyfully. But she never made it to the shore. As she was playing, an amazing thing happened. Seriously, people, if you could see the look on her face when she describes this next part, you would laugh for pure joy. A being approached her. She did not know what it was except to describe it as pure, unconditional, ebullient love. It radiated love. It pulsed love. And all things diminished before the radiance of that love. The next part makes me chuckle a bit, even though that seems out of place. She said it spoke to her and said that she had to go back, that it wasn't her time. She said, like a little kid, but I don't want to. When she recounts this experience, she emphasizes that to be in proximity of that being is all there is. She describes it as a completion, a peace, a welcoming. To leave was incomprehensible, but to decline was also incomprehensible. She felt infused with a purpose. Very, very, very reluctantly, she returned to life. She is amazing. They patched her femoral artery and explained that the graft would eventually give. In all probability, she will die within minutes. Living with that sword of Damocles should be terrifying. No, to her, it's a promise that she will get to return. Life is what we're here to do, she explains, but after. Sweet, benevolent, all-encompassing love. With every single breath, my sister is heartbeats from death, and I have never met anyone who is more alive. Fearless. All of these responses referring to nothingness or lack of consciousness really has me questioning my life. If there really is nothing after death, and this is our one and only chance to experience, learn, and grow, then I want my time here to really mean something. I want to have an impact on the world in some way to help better it for others before my time is up. And then I realize that I've just spent three hours on Reddit. If you're looking for a more religious viewpoint, I'd like to be on the other side of some of the comments here and say that if a higher power did have a plan for you and you were meant to die as part of your life experience, then that same power could simply decide that you aren't meant to see what's beyond the veil of mortality just yet. And that could explain why many saw nothing, as they weren't meant to. I guess that goes against the standard Reddit, there is no God ideal that pretty well makes up the hive mind around here. But I like to keep an open mind and accept possibilities even in the face of overwhelmingly contradictory evidence. I don't claim to have any of the answers you're looking for, or to know anything about the afterlife with any certainty, as I don't directly associate myself with any one religious group in particular, instead choosing to accept that I do not know and ponder the infinite possibilities, none of which can be said to be the one true answer. Could there be no God? Yes, there may not be. Could there be one? Is it possible? Yes, it certainly is, but no one can say with any true certainty until they've died, for good, that is, that any answer is the right answer. Anyone that claims to have those answers cannot comprehend the immensity of what they don't know. My former football coach had a heart attack on the field and was dead for 15 minutes. We were talking to him and someone finally asked what it was like to be dead. He replied with saying that he remembers a whole lot of nothing. He didn't have amnesia or anything, there was nothing around. He did say it was the most peaceful moment of his life. Going off this, I kind of think it's like Inception, where you build the world that you inhabit. Hung myself with my dog's leash almost a year ago. All I remember is letting go of the leash since I was holding on to it, and just hanging there for like a minute. It wasn't enough of a shock, like stepping off a chair, so I was suffocating and time just seemed to slow down. I felt my heartbeat in my arms and legs, and I felt it start to fade. I remember what I've come to call the big empty in my therapy groups as just the plain nothingness. It's hard to describe, and some people in this thread have managed it quite well, but my description would be a void. There's no darkness, there's no you, there's nothing. It's such a complete lack of anything at all that it can't even be described as empty, because that would imply it could be filled with something. It's hard to even realize that it exists because you can't even really perceive it. A near-death experience like mine, I think, is like peering at the void but not going in. Just enough life left to know it's there, and not enough death to be engulfed and completely extinguished by it. My nosy neighbor apparently witnessed me through the window, broke said window, and cut me down within 10 minutes. 
I was out for three days afterwards, but I have since fully recovered and finished my inpatient and outpatient program with the Youth Services Bureau and have completely turned my life around. The fear of the big empty still haunts me, knowing that I will have to face it again one day and lose. I OD'd on some sleeping pills when I was young and stupid and heartbroken. I hadn't thought much about the consequences of what would happen afterwards, except I wouldn't feel this overwhelming pain anymore. The shock of the absolute nothingness I experienced for a few moments brought me enough strength to crawl back to town and get taken to the hospital. The five or so minute ride to the hospital was me fighting with it with everything I had, and every time I slipped over, the horribleness of it made me fight just a little harder. I was too exhausted to fight once I got to the hospital. A preacher read me my last rites, and I was out. Luckily, I woke up a couple days later. I've been worse off emotionally a few times since then, but suicide never crosses my mind. There are no emotional troubles that are as awful as that sliver of nothingness I felt. My life is great now, and I'm so thankful I'm alive. I've experienced so many great things since then, I can't believe I ever thought I had nothing to live for. When I was coming to, which took a couple days, I hallucinated my best friend trying to get me into trouble by making me get out of bed, and seeing a little mouse in the corner of the room which I kept trying to capture. My friend is still alive, and I don't have a special connection to mice. It felt very real, but obviously I was hallucinating. I can see how someone might hallucinate about things like deceased relatives and mistake their visions for something more than a brain malfunction. So as far as changing my views on religion, I was fairly skeptical beforehand, but deep down hoped angels would whisk me away. Afterwards, I'm pretty sure this life on Earth is all we got. Nothing at all, really. It's much like a deep sleep. I do remember the shock of being resuscitated. It's just like, boom. You take the single most painful gasp of air as your eyes burn out from the halogen lights in the hospital. You look up and see a bunch of people in white hospital masks. You're manic and panting for air as the nurses and doctors hold you down to keep you from jumping up and ripping out the IV. I had a near-death experience in which I was ejected from an automobile. When I regained consciousness, a man came to me and said everyone survived. The man was there before any paramedics arrived. The craziest part of it all was that looking at that man gave me the most powerful sensation of deja vu ever. Maybe I hit my head too hard, but it was an insane experience. It was as if I'd seen that man before, 